previously on Ed. Do you know anything about Ryan Noel's dad? Nothing really. I think he's a fireman. Really? Oh my God, you like him, don't you? Gosh, Carol, am I just being horrible? What do you mean? I'm using a student's troubles as an excuse to hit on his dad. I like you, Molly. I like you too. Hey, hey Carol. Hi. Is that weird for everybody? Yeah, kinda. Why is this so awkward? No, it's, it's awkward. Really awkward. It's awkward. A little yeah, bit awkward. A little bit awkward. Yeah, it's awkward. But you know what? I think that's fine. I think that's normal. We're undergoing a transition, after all. This is the one. For once in your life, stop thinking. Do you think it's possible that you and I were just meant to be friends? I don't know. The problem is I don't think I can be friends with you. Why? Because I already got plenty of friends. Remember the whole maybe we were just meant to be friends thing? Yeah. We were never to speak of that again. Never. It was forbidden. Yeah, yes, I do. I think we just took care of that pretty well. Shirley? Good morning. There's someone who would like to see you. All right. Hello? Hello. Thank you. So when you said that he wanted to see me, you really meant that he wanted to see That he wished to see you, yes. Okay. No, 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 don't open that! Ah. Elaine's her husband yet, Mr. Fish, you know that. Well, open him up, fellas. How hard can it be to throw the damn switch? Pardon me, fellas. No, Bosco, wait, wait. Yeah. Ah. Shirley, I need backup. Hold on. Ah. Hey, hang on a second. Ah. Hold on. Open yeah, it. Whoa, whoa. What was that about? Ah. I'm sorry. Open when I heard about a bowling alley lawyer, I thought you ah. might be down and out. Hungry. Maybe you work cheap. Oh. But I see you're doing well. Cute assistant, designer bowling shirt. I won't waste your time. Hey, well, hold on a second. Looks can be deceiving sometimes. Why don't you tell me what the problem is? Maybe we can work something out. I'm Ed Stevens. I know. I'm Doug Tavel. Hey, Doug. Tell me, Mr. Stevens. Call me Ed. Ed. <laughs> um, are you happy here? Am I? Sure. What about your father? What about my father? Do you think he's disappointed that after putting you through law school, you're not practicing at some high-powered New York firm? No, actually. I mean, I did that. Is he happy with this career move? <laughs> not at first, no. Did he threaten to sue you? <laughs> no, no, of course not. What kind of father's going to... Your father's suing you? Yeah. For what? For disappointing him? Basically. Ouch. Listen, Doug, why don't you come back inside and we'll... Oh, is that the best you ladies can do? Why not buy you some breakfast? Yeah, this seems like a pretty basic breach of contract. So your father claims you agreed to reimburse him for the cost of your college education plus dental school. Thank you. $150,000. Oh, wow. <clears throat> That's a fair number, you think? Figure in out-of-state tuition. Yeah, probably. That's up. Well, I guess my first question would be... Was there a contract? Absolutely not. I never signed anything. Well, contracts aren't always written. They can be verbal, oral. I didn't say anything. <laughs> no, nothing like, I will pay you back every penny, I promise. No. Words to that effect? Absolutely not. The only reason why my dad is doing this is because he's angry with me. Why? Because once I started my internship, I realized it wasn't what I expected. So I quit. Your father's disappointed. I guess you can't blame him. No, but I do expect him to understand. My father owns a hardware store. He hates it. I can't remember a day growing up where he didn't dread going to work. Is that any way to live? No, it's not. So why does he want to punish me? Why does he want me to do something that'll make me as miserable as he is? Oh, 
hey there, fellas. Oh, I'll have a beer and a corn dog. I am not a waiter. Lots of mustard. The yellow kind. Mr. Fish, must we go through this every week? You cannot lob the ball onto the lane. If you do it again, I'm going to ask you to leave. Oh, my sincerest apologies, Phyllis. You know, the ball must be too light. I'll try one with a bit more heft. Ah, ah. Sorry, Dolly. I believe this ball is mine. Problem solved. I'm serious. Do not lob the ball. I won't lob the ball. I'm not messing around. Do not lob the ball. I won't lob the ball. All right. Want to dance? Let's go. to you. The man is dead. He can't hear you. I bet he faked the whole thing just so we could leave with our bowling shoes. I just can't get it out of my mind. I'm the kind of parent sues their own child. A really bad one. Hardly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I have never heard of anything way like that, that before. Here. In that case, I, I would like to speak with the chef. Uh, the chef? <laughs> You, you mean the cook? No, cook. Please let the cook know that I would like to have a, a word with him. Uh, he's not going to come out here. Uh, I'm not trying to be difficult. It's just there is very little chicken and nothing um, Chinese about this salad. Do you agree? Um, I, it could use a little more chicken. She agrees. Tell the cook that there are uh, two people who would like to see him. You are joking, right? Fine. Um, we'll go to him. We? Oui? Almonds? Do you have almonds? You shouldn't be here. <laughs> A Chinese chicken salad with no mandarin oranges. Maybe you shouldn't be here. Here. Taste this. Oh. That is incredible. <laughs> well, what's the dressing again? Ginger and... Mango. Mango. That was amazing. Where'd you learn how to do this? Hong Kong. I I I'm Ted, by the way. I'm Molly. Oh. Molly Hudson. So, Ted, um, have you ever been to Stockholm? No. Why? Because the Swedish meatballs could really use your help. <laughs> Step aside, dead man's walking shoes. Phil, what the hell are you doing? I doubt the extremely late Mr. Fish is gonna need him where he's going. Yeah, but it don't mean you gotta throw him out. Call his family or something. And have family. I called the hospital to get our bowling shoes back. Man's got no family, no friends, no surprise. Damn, that's probably why he spent all his time here. Man didn't have no life, poor man. Yeah, well. Thankfully, the curtain has closed on our time with the odious Mr. Fish. Oh, come on, Phil, man. The dude just probably wanted some human contact. That's why he would come here and pull all that crap. So he can get some attention. Then he'd probably go back home to his lonely life. You ought to know about that. Will and Living Trust. It's good you guys are taking care of this. This is important. I know. We've been putting it off since Sarah was born. And Mr. Fish kicks. Speaking for myself, that was a real wake-up call. Mr. Fish was 73, Mike. Ah, uh, tomorrow's promise to no one, my friend. Mortgages, pledges, deeds, and trust. All pretty straightforward. Oh, whoa, oh, hang on. Except uh, question 15. Any of you guys filled out question 15? Case of untimely death. Who shall care for your children? That would be Sarah. Yeah, we know, Ed. We, we just couldn't decide on an answer. And you discussed it? We fought. We've argued. Cast dispersions on one of those families. Can't say we've actually discussed it. Well, you need to. Come back when you have. Sounds obnoxious. No, no. You had to be there. He, he did it in a very unobnoxious way. Anyways, the salad was better. So they offered him a job? No, they should have. Nah, we tossed him out. Oh, watch the curve. Yeah, I got it, I got it. No, pu punch it! You're no, gonna... I... Crash. <laughs> Tried to warn you. Yeah, I know. Well, you're not leaving. Yeah, well, I killed us, and it's late. Oh, come on, one more game. You said that, like, what, an hour ago? I T-bowed trading spaces. Now you tell me. Both couples hated their rooms. 
You really are cruel. You know that? In sports, the national. Did you get that scrumptious tan in Iowa City? Oh, it's not like the photo box. What's wrong with the photo box? He's trouble. Here, look at this. See this? This picture of your cousin Bert? <laughs> Picture of your cousin Bert with his hand stuck in the pickle jar? The photo box makes us fight. It doesn't make us fight. Question number 15 makes us fight, and we have to answer it. Honey, we've got to choose someone to take care of Sarah in case we... In case we die? Yeah, in case we die. Oh, look at that. My cousin Margaret, Sarah loves her. And she'd have the twins to play with. In Nevada? I want Sarah to grow up here. My parents, they're perfect. They're perfectly old. I mean, come on, you really want Sarah to have to try to rush off from cheerleading practice to try to make it the early bird special? I'll tell you, Nancy, the answer to question 15, it's not in the photo box. Well, it has to be in here. Our entire families are in here. Well, yeah. Well, maybe, uh, maybe our families aren't the answer. What does that mean? Oh, well, we should pick one of our friends. I hadn't thought of that. Huh? Carol would be great. Yeah, what about Ed? It would be great, sir. I love that. And Molly. Mm. Yeah, Molly, definitely Molly. They all have good jobs and in nice homes. I think it matters that none of them are married. One parent, two parents. I go for quality over quantity. <laughs> now, how about that? We had nothing, and now we have an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, but how do we choose? Too bad there isn't some kind of parenting test we could give. Excuse me, Gus? Gus Tavo? Yeah, that's me. What can I do you for? We got everything from scoop to nuts. Ah, it's a little hardware humor. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. That's great. No, I'm not here for the uh, hardware or the humor. <laughs> I'm actually hoping to talk to you about your son. Barry, what did you do? Oh, uh, no, uh, sorry, not that son, a uh, different son. You must be Doug's attorney. Ed Stevens, yes, sir. Listen, um, about this, so-called contract. You know, Mr. Tavel, Doug is, as I'm sure you're aware, he's adamant in his belief that he never entered in any kind of oral contract with you. He's lying. He's lying? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, maybe you could tell me then when this agreement took place? Yeah, right after his 18th birthday. He'd just gotten accepted at the University of Wisconsin. We had a little bit of a surprise party to celebrate. So you're at the party, and while you're at the party, you tell him he's got to pay you back, is that right? No. It was his idea. He felt bad because he knew how tight the money was. <laughs> but no offense, Mr. Tavel, did, did anyone else happen over here this conversation? It happened. Drop the suit. Drop the suit, Mr. Tavel. You're not going to win. Mr. Stevens, did Doug tell you what he's been doing since he left school? No, sir. He's a handyman. Barely makes enough money to hold on. And yet he seems happy. Well, what about the rest of us? Hmm? When do we get to be happy? My wife hasn't had a vacation in seven years. My daughter never got a honeymoon because she and her husband had to pay for their own wedding. Barry, he's stuck here sorting nails because I can't afford part-time help. You know why? Because every dime I made went to pay for Doug's schooling. Now, if he wants to drop out, I can't stop him. But I sure as hell intend to make him live up to our agreement. Can I talk to you for a minute? Of course. Warren. Sorry, but what I have to say is of a highly confidential nature. Yeah. Uh, teachers, you're like priests, right? Or like shrinks, like what I say to you stays between us. No, not exactly, Warren. Why don't you tell me no, no, what no, no, it no. is? No, 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 no. I have I... to know that what I say does not leave this room. Promise me, Miss Vesey, please. It could ruin me. Fine. I, I promise, Warren. I won't tell anyone. <sighs> Pregnated a young woman. What? Are you are you sure? Yeah. Has she seen a doctor? No, she uh, took one of those pregnancy tests. Three of them. Well, they can be wrong, Warren. She needs to see a doctor. Did you use protection? Yes. Oh. God, this is so embarrassing. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I, maybe I'm just like unusually fertile. 
My loins must be teeming with life. Um, Warren, you have to tell your parents. No, no. They won't understand. They'd kill me. Uh, well, how about her parents? Do they know? You're the first person we've told. Oh, help me, Miss Fessy, please. I'm too young to be a father. <laughs> I'm here, Warren. You don't have to go through this alone. I'm here, Warren. You don't have to go through this alone. She actually said that. Yeah, you don't have to take my word for it. I mean, just listen for yourself. Oh, God, this is wrong. This is just so wrong. Warren, I am so sorry we got you involved in this. I promise we'll tell Miss Vessie everything as soon as we find a guardian for Sarah. Oh, <gasps> easy, man. Suck it up. Man, let's get a woman pregnant and a man up to handle a little pain. Mike. Hey, Hudson. Hey, Chef Ted. <laughs> Give you a lift somewhere? No, no, I'm just out getting some fresh air. Are you kidding? I was just going to get some fresh air. How about you join me? He seemed pretty determined. Yeah. I kind of got that feeling when he sued me. Right. So, should I be worried? I don't think so. In all likelihood, this thing is going to come down to your word against his. And that's not going to be enough for a judge. I imagine the whole thing will get tossed. Yes. And we'll teach him to try and control my life. Yeah, Doug, you know, you are aware, though, that he has given up a lot for you. I mean, your whole family has. Come on, Ed, you're supposed to be my lawyer. No, you're right. I am. I am. It's just not, not that I agree with what he's done. I don't, but he's made sacrifices. This doesn't have anything to do with sacrifices. He just wants me to be miserable because he is. It bothers him that I might actually be happy. And you believe that? Yeah, I do. Hey, yo, man, where you disappear to? Interesting factoid. When the deceased has no family and no one claims the body, the state has it cremated. After that, they're just happy to get rid of it. Is that? Indeed it is. Mr. Fish has returned. Phil, what the hell is wrong with you, man? What kind of mad twist of revenge are you planning? No revenge. We're going to throw a memorial for Mr. Fish. We what? The man died on our watch. We can hardly afford talk of a cover-up. I think it's a perfectly appropriate idea. Check this out. Is it bling bling? No, it's an urn. Mr. Fish's final resting place. It's an urn with bling bling. No, you. That's so nasty. That's nasty. Phil, that's nasty. Well, that's chunkier than I expected. Welcome back, Mr. Fish. <coughs> you flew? I didn't. Ted did, and it was amazing. It was like we were in this old Buick convertible in the sky, and we we spun, and we dove, and we looped, and okay, we... Okay, stop. You're making me dizzy. Molly, you barely know this guy. Did you at least ask to see his pilot's license? I didn't have to. I trusted him. Is that smart? One day he's a chef, the next day he's a pilot. No, he's a chef and a pilot, and a good pilot. He's also a scuba diver, and a skydiver, and a mountain climber, and a bungee jumper. Since when did you become Miss Extreme Supreme? I didn't. I'm, I'm having fun. He's a fun guy. I know. I know. And, and it's great. But I just wish we knew a little more about him. Like what? Like, does he have a real job? Yeah, he's a consultant. <laughs> does he have a real job? Carol, I just went for a ride. What are you so worried about? I just don't like the idea of you going up in planes with strangers. He's right, you know, I just should have kept my big mouth shut. You know, I'm his attorney, right? It's not my place to make him a better person, try to educate him. What am I thinking? All you did was ask Doug to look at things from his father's perspective. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, if I had said something to him in high school, maybe he wouldn't be in this situation now. Doug was your student? Yep. Really? What was he like? 
Honestly, lazy. Really? Mm, and if you believe the stories, kind of wild. Yeah? Hey, Shirley, what's up? Mr. Snow for the prosecution. Ah, great. Mr. Tavel's attorney. Hopefully here to tell me they're dropping the suit. Hey, Mr. Snow. Yes. Mr. Stevens, uh, I don't believe we've met James Snow. Nice to meet you. I apologize for not calling. Well, not at all. Actually, I was expecting you. Is that right? Yeah, I'm hoping you're here to tell me your client's come to a senses of dropping the suit against my client. <laughs> no. Ah, come on, Mr. Mr. Snow. We're talking about word against word on a verbal agreement with no evidence in sight. Well, then, why don't you take a look at that? My parents had a for me when I got my acceptance letter at Wisconsin. And my brother must have shot this. Hey, college boy. <laughs> mm. Are you sure we can afford it? That's your education. Don't you worry. We'll figure something out. Hmm? Okay. But I'm going to pay you back every penny, yeah, I promise. Uh, Doug, yeah. I want to. All right. Ed, I swear, I don't remember this. Well, fortunately, you don't have to because it's right here for everyone to see, including a judge. How bad is this? Well, about $150,000 bad, I'd say. Yeah, no, no listen, I'll discuss the offer with my client. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Right, okay, yeah, you too. Sorry about the cell phone on the table. How bad? First, you need to understand one thing. What? If this case goes to court, Doug, there's a very, very strong chance a judge will rule in favor of your father. Maybe we should just let him. I don't have $150,000. You can't take what I don't have. Well, unfortunately, they can, okay? The court will establish a payment schedule to garnish your wages from here on out. But I'm, I'm barely getting by now. What am I supposed to live on? Son of a bitch. Okay. Okay. What did his attorney say? Well, you ready for this? Your father's willing to drop the suit. Forgive the debt. As long as you go back to school and finish. I'm not going back. Okay, Doug, listen, as your lawyer, no, you gotta... No, my father's not gonna run my life. He's not gonna make me a dentist or anything else just to make him happy. I understand. I understand. Truly, I do. But given your options right now, can one year really be that bad? Yes, because it would mean that he won again. And he always wins. It always has to be his way with everything. Right down to the picking the school. Does that mean your father chose Wisconsin? Yeah, it was a big deal to him that I follow in his footsteps. He went to Wisconsin, so I was going to Wisconsin. I won't settle Ed. I won't give him the satisfaction. Yeah, hi. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, please. Yeah, the University of Wisconsin Admissions Department. Thank you. Thank God I found you. What's going on? Wait, Sarah, she's falling into a vent shaft. Oh my God, is she? Where's the vent shaft? In the park. Come on, get up. We have to hurry. Sarah! Sarah! I don't see her. You sure she's? Oh, she's down there. And why else? Why else would Bun Bun be here? Sarah never goes anywhere without Bun Bun. She never goes anywhere without Bun Bun. Come on, take it easy, there, pal. Maybe she, maybe she just wandered off somewhere. You don't know. Yeah, but what if she didn't? What if she's down there? We gotta go down there. I gotta know. I gotta know. Right. Well, maybe we should wait for the fire department. The fire department? What's what's wrong with me? Why didn't I call why didn't I call the fire department? Don't beat yourself up over this. We can call them now. Call them now. Oh no, no, we don't have time. What? Well, how are we what are we gonna do? I mean, how are we gonna get down there? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna do it? Hey, where'd you get the rope? Tie this around your ankles and lower you in. My ankles. Uh, I, I do it myself, buddy. My, my shoulders are too damn broad to go through the opening. Come on. Give me the rope. Really? You gonna do it? I'll do it, absolutely. I'll do it for Sarah. I'll do anything. I can't tell you how much that means to you, buddy. Get off. Let's go. Come on. Grab the rope. Here I go. I'm going in. Mike! I found Sarah! She was she was at home sleeping with Willie Butch. Thank God. Oh. Huh. Oh. Did I mention how much I hate doing this to our friends? I'm not sure I haven't been listening. Well, you better hope we die young, Mike. It's the only way they're going to forgive us for doing this. Bill, what the hell is going on in lane six? This was Mr. Fish's favorite lane. I thought out of respect, we should close it till after the memorial. Respect, respect for who? You couldn't stand Fish. You know what? I am simply trying to send a message that Stucky Bowl is a place that cares. And customers eat this crap up. You know what? I'm on to you. You think you got everybody full, Stubbs, but I'm on to you. I think it's very thoughtful. Yeah, exactly. But when the last time he did anything even close to thoughtful? 
Never. That's right. You know why? Because Phil is a constant. He's like, he's like the speed of light. He don't change. Never. You follow me? He don't change. Never. That's right. You know what? This memorial has nothing to do with fish. It's about Phil, just like everything else. You know how I know? Because Phil is a constant. That's right. You know, it's sad, really. When Phil looks at fish, he sees the future Phil. Old, dead, and all alone with no one to cry over his shriveled up ass. You know, when it comes down to it, this memorial is about Phil. Hey, Malls. Hi, Nance. Hi, Sarah. Wow, what do you have there? It's beautiful. Did you make that? Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. Honey, I am so sorry to barge in, but I need a really big favor. Name it. Ugh, kids are in my office, and Mike's running late. Can she stay here? Absolutely. Oh, except um, I'm not going to be here. I have to go out to my weekly budget meeting. Oh, go, go. She'll be fine. She's got her art supplies and her books and stuff. And, and Unicef Rent said you keep an eye on her, so. Are you sure? Positive. OK. All right. Bye, pumpkin. Gosh, you're so cute. <laughs> bye, honey. Say bye, buddy. <laughs> Sweetie, sit here for just one quick second, okay? I'm gonna be right back. Why? I'll be right back. One second. <laughs> she see you? Oh, no. I'm like a stealth bomber, invisible despite my size. Who said that? Very cute. How much time do we have? <laughs> Half an hour, maybe. All right, then. Showtime. Oh, my God. I hate it when you talk like we're in an action film. <laughs> Sorry. Let's do this thing. around the other side of the side. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Tavel. Did Doug accept my offer? <laughs> to go back to college? No. I guess I expected that. Can I ask you a question? I suppose. You hate your job? As Doug says, you can't remember time you weren't miserable working here. I don't give it a whole lot of thought. It's a job. Not the job you wanted, though. What are you getting at? Well, what I'm getting at is, Doug told me you studied at the University of Wisconsin also, so I took the liberty and checked the records. You studied in their architectural program. So? So, uh, what I found out was you dropped out before you finished, and I thought, gosh, that sounds familiar. It's not the same. No? I was struggling. If I hadn't quit, I probably would have flunked out. Uh-huh. Does Doug know about any of this? There's no reason he should. Oh, I see that I disagree. Because, you know what I think? I think this isn't about the money. I think this never was about the money. You know what I think this is about? You're not wanting Doug to make the same mistake you did. I think this whole thing's one gigantic wake-up call. Yeah, what if it is? Isn't that a parent's job? To share the wisdom that comes from living with mistakes? To hope they don't repeat them? Well, sure, by talking to them, sharing your experiences, not by suing them. This is a private matter, Mr. Stevens. There's some things that Doug doesn't need to know. See, I disagree, because here's the thing. When you brought in the suit against your son, it ceased being a private matter because you got me involved. So talk to your son, Mr. Tavel, or I will. Look for your mouth, hmm? Okay. But I'm gonna pay you back every penny I promise. Uh, you know, no matter how many times you watch it, he's still gonna say the same thing. I know, it's just thank you. How can he say he didn't remember? I just it just doesn't make sense. Well, unless he's lying. Unless he really doesn't remember. <laughs> Wait, when was the shot? What time of day? Um, I, night, I think. There's lights on in the room. Why? You said Doug was a wild man, right? Mm-hmm. Excuse me a second.
As promised, safe and sound. And still time for a quick shower before school. Shower? Uh-uh, that ain't gonna get it done. What do you say I hop in the back and you drive us through a car wash? <laughs> You're all right, Hudson. I like the way you think. Oh, well, ain't so bad yourself. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you. I had a great time. Anytime. See you around. I don't know, the kids all sit. Wait a minute. Is that Molly? Sure looks like her. Who is she with? If I'm not mistaken, his name is Ted. <laughs> Interesting. Hey, college boy. <laughs> mm. Are you sure we can afford it? Nah, it's your education. Don't you worry. We'll figure something out. Hmm? Okay. But I'm gonna pay you back every penny, I promise. Uh, Doug, yeah. I want to. Does an explicit oral agreement exist between Doug and Gus Tavel? I think you just heard it. Nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Stevens. Thank you. Uh, please, the court, to indulge me by watching this video tape one more time. Is there something I missed the first time? I believe so, Your Honor. Now, what's being said isn't actually what's important. What matters, rather, is what Doug's wearing. His clothing? More precisely, his sunglasses. Your Honor, I don't see the relevance. The relevance, Your Honor, is that nighttime's dark, Yet my client's wearing sunglasses at night. Why is he wearing sunglasses at night and indoors yet? Trying to be cool. Trying to be cool, right. The veritable Corey Hart. No, I, I would suggest that he's wearing sunglasses at night to hide something from his father, his eyes. Your Honor? Trying to hide his eyes from his father, Your Honor, because he knows his eyes would give him away. Eyes would betray him because on the night that Doug was accepted into college, he and three of his friends celebrated by smoking a little marijuana. Doug got high, his judgment was impaired, so impaired, as a matter of fact, he doesn't even remember having this conversation. So, Your Honor, I move this matter be dismissed due to the diminished capacity of my client. How can he be held to a contract he doesn't even remember entering into? Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Are we simply to accept Mr. Stevens' word for his client's state of mind on that evening? You don't have to, Your Honor. So I have right here three sworn affidavits from three of Doug's friends, the three friends that he partied with that evening. Now these friends have nothing to gain by exposing themselves, and yet they're willing to testify. In the meantime, I have three sworn statements right here. Your Honor, please. I'm going to need a recess while I consider this new evidence and review the tape. Thank you, Your Honor. What? Motorcycles? Since when do you ride motorcycles? Since this morning. Ted took me. Oh. I gotta tell you, it was the most fantastic... How do you know? I saw you on the street. So, Miles, are you seeing Ted? No, no, it, it's not like that. Mm, what's it like? He's just this amazing force of energy. You know, he looks at life as a big adventure, and if you're, if you're lucky enough to get caught in his wake, you just get swept up in it. It's exhilarating. <laughs> Where's that leave Sean? I told you, I am not seeing Ted. Just spending an awful lot of time with him. All right, you win, I like him. Ha! But nothing has happened, nothing. And Sean? He's a good guy, Molly. I know, he's a great guy, he really is. And, and, and we're very comfortable with each other. It's just that I'm starting to think that there's something missing. Like what? I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. Zing? Zing? Yeah, you know, sparks, excitement, surprise. Have, have you talked to Sean about this? How do you tell a guy he's got no zing? <sighs> what will you tell him? I don't know. After reviewing the tape and weighing the evidence, it's clear that Doug Tavel was not in control of his faculties at the time. Though it pains me to reward a youthful, not to mention a legal transgression, I find for the defendant. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope you in no way consider this a victory. Mr. Tavel, your son's a young man right now. You gotta let him live his own life. Make his own decisions, otherwise you're gonna lose him. You have any children? Nope. Yeah, maybe you can't understand. 
no matter how old they get, you never stop being a parent. You never stop wanting what's best for them. Yes, you got a call from Meg and Nancy. Yeah. Do you have any idea what this is about? No, not a clue. Congratulations, Carol. You made it here in exactly 15 minutes and 27 seconds. Yeah. Molly, 1831. Ed, 31 minutes and change. Disappointing show, to say the least. So you call me, tell me to drop what I'm doing and hurry over here as fast as I can, and then when I get here, you tell me I'm not fast enough. Now, when you have a child, you're often asked to drop whatever it is you're doing and put their needs ahead of your own. I don't have a child. You could. You could have Sarah. What? Mike and I need to decide custody of Sarah if anything happens to us. Yeah, we want to pick one of you guys. We couldn't decide who. And as dumb as it sounds, we've been testing you. Th that thing with Warren, we wanted to see how you would react to someone who you cared about doing something really stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the thing with the vent shaft, it was like a <laughs> crisis management kind of right thing. Don't tell me. Sarah didn't trash my office, you did. Yeah. You guys, please don't hate us. Well, there's varying degrees of hate, so really, this is how you guys thought you'd do this, really? I'm I'm with Ed. You lied to us. Oh, come on, you guys. This isn't about us, it's about Sarah. No matter how stupid and insensitive they were, and you were stupid and insensitive. But they did it for Sarah because they love her and they want what's best for her. We can't forget that. Well, I think we've got a winner. What? Those tests, they weren't the real tests. They're just to annoy you. This is the real test. Seeing who would understand that as a parent, you have to every once in a while make a jackass out of yourself for the <laughs> sake of your kids. Well, you're doing a good job with that. I think he's just making it up as he goes along. Sour <laughs> grapes, Ed. Molly, if anything happens to us, we would love if you would be Sarah's guardian. <laughs> yeah, but only if you want to. Are you kidding? Come on, I would be honored. <laughs> well, there's question 15. <laughs> wait a second. Wait, wait. I got here in 15 minutes and 27 seconds. Doesn't that, that count for something? Well, it does. In the event of our untimely death, Willie Butch is all yours. Yeah, you get Willie Butch. No. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm certain Mr. Fish would be delighted to know how many of you came out tonight to pay your respects. When do we get the bowl? The lanes will reopen in 15 minutes. William Fish was an obnoxious, opinionated blowhard who tried the nerves of everyone who ever came into contact with him. Promise me you won't let Stubbs speak at my service when I die. So why honor his memory? Because he was here. And while he was here, he made damn sure you noticed him. You may not have liked him, but I'll bet you remember him. Without further ado, the Stucky Bowl Honor Guard will assist me in William Fish's final send-off with a 21-ball salute. Set hands! That gold pen. Anything I should know about? If I'm not mistaken, it contains the ashes of Mr. William Fish. I see. Anything you want me to do? No. We'll search for tomorrow. Present on! Brother Fish. 